Welcome to a special live stream edition of Powerhouse Politics. I'm ABC News Chief White House Correspondent Jonathan Carl. And I'm ABC News Political Director Rick Klein. And we have a colleague here, Martha Raddatz. I'm supposed to introduce myself? No, no, no. no. Okay. You're, you're a guest on this program, oh, okay. Martha. I know That's you anchor thought, other yeah. stuff. Yeah. You're a guest okay. on this program. Just, happy to be here. Just to be clear, we are very excited to have you <laughs> here talking about the mini series that is coming out based on your book, The Long Road Home. The Long Road and Home. And right next to you, Sergeant Eric, Eric Berkwin. Berkwin. And, and John, John Beavers, Beavers, who plays the sergeant in, in, I, the, in I, the miniseries. I pretend to be Eric Berkwin. Right. And they tried to get somebody that was the same height. Was that basically yeah, that the, was uh, ba the whole uh, casting uh, call was really just... That's <laughs> all they cared about, yeah. Stand right. next to that guy and try not to um, look shorter than him. But, but Martha, this is, I mean, I remember as you were writing this book, as you're going, this was such a such an emotional and powerful uh, experience for you to, I know you, you, you covered uh, this, this horrible day, uh, this horrible battle in, 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 in Iraq in, uh, in 2004, turn it into your book, and now it's a gonna be on a mini series. I know. It's, it's it, it, you know, Eric can talk about it too. I mean, it's, I, I think none of us could have ever imagined that we're standing here right now talking about that, but I, I'm really proud because it tells the story of, these guys and these guys who are watching here from from the 25 cab eric was on a rooftop they were ambushed 19 guys um and uh, nagio honestly has just done an amazing job john beavers his performance with uh eric berkwin is just incredible and you know you got this here you got michael kelly in there playing someone as well so so bring us back to april 2004. i mean this is when this was in the very beginning of the war. It was, um, you know, we were going in there in the impression that it was going to be a more of a peacekeeping mission. We were going to be passing out food and helping out, building schools and stuff like that. And then uh, this was pretty much our first day there. And while we were on a patrol... Remind us exactly where you are. I was in uh, Sutter City. And uh, he was 23 years old. I always like to point that out, uh, too. I was a very young man. And uh, we were just doing a patrol out there. And on our way back, things changed dramatically for us. And now I'm standing here. You know, it's been a pretty crazy experience throughout all of it. What, what, what's it like to watch John Beavers over here recreating this, like, the, by the, the worst days of your life, right? I mean, this is... Um, it's one of the worst day. It's one of, you know, many. Yeah. But it was pretty surreal watching all of these guys. I mean, the casting director did an amazing job casting all of these actors portray, you know, some of the real-life soldiers. And the ability that they did the ability that they had and they did to order to act like us it was amazing because they picked up the mannerisms because they had the ability to hang out with some of the soldiers and get to learn them so it made it very surreal well, can i just add in butt in in your yeah. interview that, that <laughs> eric was also a technical advisor um along with aaron fowler who was yeah. on one of the rescue squads there and so john beavers had an advantage right because you had eric there every single day where yeah. the others met them but yeah no i mean i had a I had a huge sense of responsibility going into it, but sure. then once you meet this guy and you see how generous he is, and you know, just very early on was extremely supportive, telling me I could do it before I believed I could do it, and you know, we were on a set that was so accurate that some of these guys said, you know, they could blink for a second and really believe they were back in Sodder, and I got to walk around that set with Eric and wow. ask him like, hey, I got to do this scene tomorrow where we, you know, we take this building or whatever how did it actually happen and he could show me you yeah, know it's, it's fascinating you recreate the city <laughs> at Fort Hood and in Sodder City is is placed right there and it was a yeah. lot I mean a lot of bonding with the cast I love the dog tags you're wearing Martha tell the story there so these John Beavers did this I mean this cast and crew all of us grew so close and John Beavers for all the cast and crew made these dog tags which say the long road home cover your sector because that's you you explain why you did this well there's a really great monologue in the in the in the show where uh, Robert Milton Berger played by Jeremy Sisto says um, when we're out there your only job is cover your sector and trust that the guy on the right and left of you is doing the same and it basically means you have to do your job for your brother's sake and your brother's doing his job for your sake and that's how we're gonna get through this and that's very true of the way these guys talk about this conflict and, and you know, any soldiering experience they've had, and that's why it means the entire world to us. 
uh, in the cast that um, so many members of 25 Cav are, are here today and, and have supported uh, throughout the whole uh, process of shooting the thing. Gold Star families who lost um, uh, sons on that day have, have, you know, been very generous with sharing their stories and sharing their support and telling us that they believed that we could do justice to this story and we really believe that, you know, we have. And it, good. Yeah. A lot's happened in the 13 years since, since then, but it, we're at this extraordinary moment where we're talking about Gold Star families, we're talking about service, we're talking about sacrifice. Martha, I was really struck by something you said over the weekend on, on this week about how the focus over the last week or two has been how hard that phone call is to make, but there should be more focus on what it's like to receive that. Yeah. What are the lessons that you view out of this, out of this incident and now out of this <laughs> miniseries as ap applicable to this moment now? Well, I think, you know, I have to say that, that obviously what happened in um, New York resonated for, for me this week. I have, I know a lot of Gold Star families. I know, and I, they're sacred to me. They're sacred. And I, I think respecting them and doing whatever you can to help them is, is what you should do. Um, I also have the advantage of knowing these guys for 13 years and have covered conflict, as you know, for, for longer than that. Um, that really was my overwhelming sentiment, that, that I, I, I understand how hard it must be for anyone to make those calls. And I mean, it's like any death, right? You always say, I don't know what to say. Sure. Um, but I think you just have to give people support. Um, these guys, one of my most emotional nights on the set, it was the last night we were there. And um, the mother of one of the soldiers who was lost was there and the actor who played her son was there and mm. we walked it's in the middle of the night. Wow. We walked down the set. Um, it was still dusty because they'd had lots of special effects. She didn't want to go down there then. And the actor had his arm around her. I had my arm around her, holding hands, walking down that set. And I said, do you want to come off? Do you want to take a break? And she said, no, no, no. I mean, just tears streaming down her face. We all did. And um, she said, no, I want to see what he experienced. I want to be where he was. I want to... And she, she looked up in the sky of the set and said, this is the last thing he saw. Mm -hmm. And she said, but I think he was so brave. And, I, 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 and we talked, and I said, do you think he was scared? And she said, no, I don't think he was scared. And it meant so much to her. And I really, I mean, the thing that I'm proudest of is, is for anything that I had to do with this is that it's, it reminds people of people like Eric and the others who do this all the time, who are less than 1% of the country who do this. I know John, I know Michael Kelly, I know Jeremy, all those guys have an enormous respect for a part of the world that a lot of people don't know anything about. And, you know, these guys, you see them kind of standing here, these guys have become so close. And I know this is all a lifelong bond. I think all of us, all of us feel that way. So we're, we're I mean, you, you, you have, you established and you maintained this bond with, 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 with these guys over, I mean, it's, first of all, it's amazing it's that long, isn't it? Yes, I mean, it's, it's so like, amazing. Like, like, who would know this guy's over 23? Come I'm on, not, right? you're, you're <laughs> like such a grown up no. now. So what, what, what was it about this? What, what, where were you, what were you thinking, what were you doing as you were, uh, you know, you, 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 were, you were covering the story for ABC when things went bad in Sadr City? Well, I, I mean, I was in Baghdad. I wasn't there in the battle, and no one was. I mean, no one knew yeah. an ambush was going to happen. We were actually just talking about this, all of us, that, you know, there's no video that exists of that, mm. of that battle. There are a mm. couple of still photographs of people coming out after it. And, and um, Carl Wald, who was up on the roof after they were ambushed, took some photographs of the soldiers on the roof while they were there. Um, but he took them because he thought that someday someone would find that camera and see the last pictures of them because they never mm -hmm. thought they'd make it off that roof. So when I heard about this battle afterwards, um, Major General Peter Corelli, who was the division commander of the 1st Cavalry Division, I said, I, I, I got to talk to these guys. And they flew me out to Camp War Eagle, and I sat down, and it was one of those life-changing moments where you realize, you know, we're all covering the politics of war at that part, port, point. The, the invasion was over and you realize how profound this was. I'd also never seen a soldier cry. And Robert Miltenberger and some others broke down on camera explaining what happened. And then they all said, you gotta go talk to the families. And that's, 
I, I, I couldn't leave this story. I even hate to calling it a story. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like I'm, I'm protective of these guys. They are of me. It's yeah. it's 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 just it's different than anything I've ever done. And I can't imagine those soldiers that I'm and families close to, like being away from them. I mean, it's it's just, it, it's really the most important project I've ever been on. And how important is it for the, the macro story of learning the lessons of the war to focus on an individual battle like this, to go real micro on this, like yes. frame by frame, as, the, as this film does it, with your experience? Um, I think that it's important to actually take a look at what had happened and how it happened. That way we could better prepare ourselves in future engagements if that was the case. It's also, I, I say, you know, like, you you so nail Eric Berkwin in this, but it's a bigger story than that. And yeah. and it's what I would say to all the guys involved in it, too. This isn't just about you. This isn't just about your battle. This is a universal story. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, I think this show does a lot of things, but one of the things that I think it does really well is it talks about, as, as Martha was saying, like, it talks about... The soldiers on the ground shows you the details and the nuance of what's happening there, but it also spends a lot of time with the families um, back home waiting for news in excruciating hours between updates. Um, it also deals with the families in, in the Iraqi communities that are <clears throat> displaced or, uh, you know, dr dramatically affected by. It's, it touches on the different humans, the different individuals that pay the cost of war. And I think, I think we as a country maybe, <clears throat> need an update in, in our conversation about what is the cost of war and who pays it. And I think, as you're saying, it's a really excellent question. I think because we're looking at these very specific, flawed, human, brave, courageous, terrified individuals, suddenly we go, oh, that's me in that unthinkable circumstance. And war stops feeling so far away and the 1% of the country that participates in the families that wait for that news stop feeling uh, alien from us and we suddenly go oh I understand uh, that's f for me you know they pay that cost they pay that cost for my freedom you know what I mean and, and humans individuals do that and, and this is that an intense role to play and like you said a responsibility yeah I mean, man I tell you what I, f I feel the responsibility like talking about it but I also really care so much about this project and I'm, I'm so excited for people to see it for exactly that reason I think that it will in a small way affect the conversation about um, you know what these guys do and uh, what their families do with them we should also say that it's an, the A part on, on National Geographic. That's it right. premieres on November seventh, but there's a, the documentary. Yep. Okay, you can no, go ahead. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I was going to ask you to. So it's the... eight, so it starts on November seventh on Nat Geo Channel, and Nat Geo has invested really so much in trying to tell this story. But they also at the there, so they'll run two parts that night, and then each Tuesday night after that they'll want, run another one. And when part eight airs, right after that they'll air a documentary that we produced at, at ABC through ABC with the real guys. And I go back and, I mean, I have over the years anyway, yeah. we have 13 years of tape of, yeah, of talking to these yeah. guys and just a, sort of where are, where are they now? Yeah. They're right here. Yeah, that's right. Well, Martha, right here, thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for, for putting your heart and soul into this role. And uh, we look forward to watch this entire miniseries and, of course, the documentary. Martha Raditz, Eric, John, Rick Klein and myself, that is it for this live stream of Powerhouse Politics. We can go on for another hour, but uh, <laughs> we'll talk more. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.